Hey, what's up? Back again. First base note hit me in the chest, and I was just like, there's no way that's too late. MB Enclosures it has his own YouTube channel, and this guy is an animal when it comes to designing boxes. And All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. Howdy! Subscribe, ask about isobaric enclosures. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what isobaric enclosure is. And I'm going to use my old trusty... Kick the L17s to depict that enclosure type for you. Primarily for the simple reason that they're fairly light. So let's take two of them out. I've been doing the closure for these too. Uh, let's go. What is isobaric loading? Isobaric is. I, I forgot what the term actually means. Let's go to the, let's go over here and find out what this term iso, iso buried definition. Uh, definition. Hey, y'all like my computer, man? Uh, iso buried definition. Iso means to, ah, right here. What is where iso mean? Over relating to isobar. Mm, that's helps. Con 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 characterized by constant and equal pressure. So, in an isobaric system, the equal pressure that's going to be generating is used by the two subwoofers. All right? But understand this when you use the isobaric design that you're only going to get the cone area of one sub. And you're also only going to get the, well, you combine the two. So the vascularity is going to be cut in half. The moving mass could be increased by what form of ISO loading you use. Okay. But the primary reason why it was used in the early 90s, most of the 90s, is because the subwoofers did not have the power that they have today. They don't, don't not only did they have not have the power handling capabilities that they have today, they also didn't have the X Max that they have today. And people were ISO loading to get a greater X Max so it can get a greater extension into the deeper base and also to make the box smaller. Boxes were relatively large back in the 90s. Hence, you do not you do not see any iso isobaric loaded designs today, primarily because the wolf is already playing in small boxes, so they don't need that, and uh, they have very very low extension, so it's not used today. I myself will tell y'all, you don't need an iso loaded in chamber unless you have some older drivers. Uh, you try and you have limited space and you're trying to cut that space down to use this driver. You got a shit ton of money, you don't know what to do with it. Uh, and it has its cons and it has its pros. I would say the only pro of an ISO loaded chamber is that it's ability to cancel out non-linearities. And what that means is, remember I told you about dampening and the subwoofer starting and stopping? Well, it's just like breaking. When you breaking it, when you breaking the subwoofer down, or when you breaking your car, it depends on what the outside environment is, whether it's wet or dry, how long it takes for you to stop. A good amplifier that has heavy dampening, and a sub and a, and a subwoofer that has a certain performance level, great great surround, great spider, uh, moving mass proportional to the, the BL generated, will be able to stop quickly. And that's what generates what you call base. And also what's generate what we all call SPL. It also helps generate what we all call SQL. The ability of the subwoofer to stop and cancel on the die. In all subwoofers, the braking process is gradual. Even though it's happening at fractions of a second, it's happening nonetheless. It's switching from pulling in, cone going in, to cone going out. But when it switches direction like that, that's it's breaking. That's happening 
at a at a, at a microsexual level, microsexual, micro, micro uh, 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 a time <laughs> element that's moving oh, yeah. very very fast, right? <laughs> a white man, better black, making fun of me because I said that everything I am a man, so everything I do is sex. No, S micro seconds. That's what I'm saying. It's happening very fast, but it's happening nonetheless. Now, when you have two together, particularly in the clamshell configuration, isobaric clamshell is like this. They're actually facing each other, and there's a piece of wood in between, or something. Some membrane is in between. You want it with a, I, when I was using them, I always used the clamshell configuration. Whoa, man! Now this thing's supposed to be following my face. So why did you go left? Are you confused? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I try to make, I always use a piece of wood in between. And it's back in the 90s. I built this with two JBL. I actually had four JBL 12s. And they needed a relatively large box. It was like three and a half, four cubes per. And I wanted to put four of them inside of Escort. Escort GT. So what I did was I isolated four of them. And got two pairs. Clamshell. And the reason why I kept a piece of wood in between is because, number one, I needed surrounds hitting, impacting each other. But also, I wanted to keep the moving mass down. The, when you couple a clamshell drivers, because there's different ways of isolating. The clamshell is what we're going to talk about here. They're together. Now, when they're together like this, and it, I just say this, they're not playing. Let's say you got them. And the box is underneath. This subwoofer is inside the box. This one's on top. And it's on top. Now, what's happening here? Well, you're only going to get the output of one cone. Because only when you put them together like that, only one cone is moving. I mean, both cones are moving. But the rating aspect to the outside environment is just one cone. Now, I would not suggest, maybe this thing is moving all over the place on its own mind. It's crazy. It's crazy. They're going to like this on the video, but this thing is, what are you looking at? Ain't nothing over there. Stay right here. Okay. I'm going to tell you what's happening. What's that? It's kept catch, capturing the movement Shadow. of both of y'all. When you do this, and you Oh, yeah, that. do that? And it go over there? And go like this? Mm -hmm. No, nah, it's not doing that. It just went over there and looked at something wrong with it, but it's crazy. Okay. It's going to be a pretty long video because the, the device is crazy. Okay. No one uses I clamshell unless they're looking, unless they are a sonic, uh, I'm talking about a real asinine anal audiophile. Because the only benefit of using a clamshell design is to cancel out that braking system. Because when you start to break the wolf at the bottom, because they're wired, this wolf will be wired. Correctly, the wolf inside the box will be wired incorrectly, or however you want to do it. However, you want to do it. But what's happening is one cone is actually controlling the other at the same time that both of them are working together. Well, this is going to be real hard to explain. So, when this one starts to break, when this cone starts to break, because it's going to change direction, the motor force of the other one is doing it in the opposite direction. So your braking happens faster. Understand? Imagine this subwoofer is moving in as this one is moving in as well. Now, as the polarity switches from positive negative around the pole piece, they both start moving in the same direction all the time. All the time they're doing that. But because of one is working opposite of the other, the braking, the starting and stopping is almost instantaneous, if not instantaneous. So instead of having the gradual braking that you will never hear to your ear, it's an instantaneous, I'm, I'm very, very fast, seconds, nanoseconds, however you want to call it. And because of that, the bass is a lot more, it's, it's more impactful, it's accurate. It's very, very accurate. I the system. Uh, it's very, very clean sounding bass. I know you heard seal bass, ported bass, but to hear isolate the system, I will attest. Not heard. I, last one I time I heard one was twenty something, twenty over twenty five years ago. The bass is very, 
very rich and deep. Uh, you would have to try it out for yourself, though, to understand its limitations in that you're only still going to get the output. Even though you're using two speakers, you only get an output of one speaker. But it's like having a one, one speaker supercharged. Uh, one speaker on steroids. You can take any, you can take some SPL drivers and isolate them and have you an SQL driver, honestly. You can take some subwoofers geared for SPL <laughs> and put two of them together, shrink your box volume, whatever, it, if, they, if, if, if they need two cubes each, you isolate them, they only need one cube, even for 12s. So if you had two any subs, these Sundown X8s, Sundown X12s, Brazilian Platinum Gold 12s, whatever you want to name, CP Town Mezio, take a pair and isolate them. Uh, whatever the box size is for one, you now cut that in half. Now, there's some more technical terms that go along with it as well, but I don't think y'all really need to know all that. But just know you can take some, the, the, the base gets even richer and the box gets smaller. And now that I think about it, it could have some advantages in today's world, but why would you have to buy two? Subwoofers to get two. Why would you buy two SPL subwoofers, subwoofers just to clamp set them to get an SPL sound? Unless, oh, that would make sense. So you get two SPL subwoofers that generate a lot of pressure in a two or a two or two point five box. You get two of them clam shell it. Now your box is only one point two five. So it's gonna be hard. To, the port's gonna be insanely low. This camera has a mind its own. The port's gonna be insanely low, but my mic's working. The port's gonna be insanely low. Uh, um, it's insanely long, but your accuracy will go up with. Oh, so you have accuracy and motor force. Mm. Now that might be something. Look at now. I mean, it'd be inefficient. Cause I'm thinking, baby, you're gonna buy two expensive subwoofers just to get the output of one. But you're getting out, but let you getting out. I put a one though, baby, in a box half the size of what one would take regularly. So you're getting sonic accuracy with an SPL output, but you had to spend twice as the money to get it. That's the part that downplays. You would have to pay, like you could take some cheap subwoofers. How did I say, you don't know, take two audio pipe BDC fours, eights, or. No, take two Hyphonics, eight. So I'm going to have them on the channel if I didn't already have that video up. And then clamshell them together. So for $200, you're now increasing the motor force because you get to use the motor force of both. You are shrinking the box. So you go from playing in one cube or 1.2 to playing in 0.5 to 0.6. And now you have a, a SPL characteristics greater than a single X8. Mm -hmm but more accurate than a J-Audio. But you only got one sub. Now I put a one cone and you spent $200 to do so. So you you still cheaper than a $500 J-Audio or $300 Sundown AC. Oh, you know what? This could be a nice little song for me to try out. This video got pretty long. I went to explain the differences why they no longer use them. And for those purposes, it's, but there is an advantage now with these superior SPL drivers, baby. You can actually get, <laughs> you can get a SQ driver on steroids. So you just take two SPL drivers, and couple them together. Now you count out the linear distortion because uh, you get, you're going to get a greater motor force than what they have individually but it's gonna sound better because they're helping each other break and start, go again. So they're more, even more efficient. Mm, I don't know, I wonder whether we be more efficient. There might be more, I have to look into that. I might have to program that. We gotta use our old trusty boy here to figure out. Will, we, will it become more efficient? Yeah, it's got to become more efficient because it's going to stop quicker and react faster. But you have to pay a lot of money. Oh, man, I just stumbled on something trying to explain something to these people in the video. Hey, man, stop this video. I'm going to upload this video. Y'all hey, do some debating in here in the comments. 
and tell me what y'all think. Because even though we don't longer we no longer use the isobaric designs for the reason that we have subwoofers, not these, these are shallows, that we have subwoofers trying to that can I bring small boxes already and have greater X Max in a small box. But you could supercharge that if you get two. You could buy four high phonics. $120 subs, baby. Clamshell them and actually be just as loud and more sonically accurate, definitely more sonically accurate, in a smaller box than two Sun 986s. That's why I was doing that. Mm. Cause them jokers three hundred something dollars a piece and them jokers $120 a piece. So two, two times 120 is 240, 480 against six. Ooh, shoot. You actually win. Stop the video. Get the hell out of here. We're going to talk about that. That's going to be a big argument right here. We're going we gonna to shop. We're going to wake up the internet with that one, baby. Hit it for me, baby.